Hello friends, in this video we're going to look at this Yamaha RX300U natural sound stereo receiver. I paid $14.99 for this at a thrift store and got a 20% discount for a coupon, so uh, you know, whatever, 12 bucks. Um, I bought this with the idea that it was a phono preamp, which is kind of right and kind of wrong. In the old days, a standalone phono preamp was something that the hi fi people wanted to have. It would typically have a receiver and a phono amplifier and maybe some switching like this. But um, the one thing that a phono preamp truly lacked was um, any form of power amplifier. And so this is called a receiver, which really means it's a preamplifier plus the amplifier all built in one. So this can be used as a phono preamp maybe in conjunction with a modern surround sound system. Typically surround sound systems don't have phono preamps built into them as the receivers from this era did. This is uh, a stereo receiver from about 1987 so that was before surround sound became popular. Uh, you can see from some of the features here that this is in the CD era. It says CD here. So CDs were becoming pretty popular in about 1987. They were introduced maybe in the early 80s, uh, something like that. I think I got my first CD player in about 1986 or so. Um, this has all the basic features you would expect to see in a stereo receiver. Bass, treble, balance, loudness, which is kind of a bass boost thing. Um, a set of tuning uh, presets and a big volume knob, headphone jack. This has A and B speakers so it has two separate uh, speaker outputs that you can select. We'll see that on the back next. So here's the back. This is pretty typical for this type of receiver. One unswitched output and one switched output with a, more of a severe power limit. This one's 100 watts for the switched and 200 watts for the unswitched. So that makes it easy to chain things together in a, uh, in a system. On this side we've got our antenna inputs. The black is an AM loop antenna that I had laying around. The uh, tan or clear is a FM dipole antenna. It's kind of a mess here but you get the idea. So as you can see I've hooked up these little uh, speakers to the A output section. These are also some speakers I got at a thrift store for $6.99 with probably some discounts, I don't remember. I'm going to look at these in detail in another video but um, I've already tried them out and they, they do work and they sound reasonably good given their small size. So we'll turn it back around and listen to the sound and uh, look at the lights. Pulled the speakers out of their tape and got everything plugged in, so we'll try it out here. I already know that it works, except that it's not plugged in. Okay, let's fix that. So we'll turn the commercial down that came through on the radio. But you can see we've got this uh, nice LED display here, and this is a power signal indicator for the FM. Uh, in this case, let's tune up and down a little bit. Maybe go to a uh, weaker station. They're all showing fairly strong on this reading so far. I guess it's a lot weaker. You can see that it's here that it's uh, it's got a lot of static on it. Let's look at the inputs. We've got video aux tuner CD phono and there's a tape setting tape in and out we've got the A speakers on now we'll turn that up a little bit oh is given to is to be on the throat looks like 
what we're hearing here is a little leak through in the tape mode which ideally wouldn't happen at all but number two trust number three pray and the so here i don't know if you can tell but that's stereo static it has a nice spatial effect So I've looked up some specs on this. That's, uh, I believe, 33 watts of power output, which is plenty loud enough for kind of casual listening. Audiophiles generally want more power than that to drive inefficient but good at sounding speakers. And another theory is that you want to have a lot of headroom. So even if you're only listening to 30 watts, you want to have a 100 watt stereo or something like that. In my last video, I used the phono preamplifier feature of this uh, kind of to demonstrate a turntable. I hadn't even tried the unit or these speakers before then. It's just kind of a quick lash up. But it turned out they worked after I worked through a little bit of uh, setup problems. I may have had this monitor button on the wrong setting, I think. But the uh, line level outputs is kind of the primary way to tap into the phono preamp if you want to use this with in conjunction with another amplifier setting such as a AV system and really the reason to do that is because let's say you invest in some good speakers for your stereo listening with the AV system and then you've got your rear and center speakers so for let's say a five speaker system which is pretty common that's what I use but now we've got um, usually some form of auxiliary input that you can use a preamplifier of some kind with a phono to go through the AV system, the uh, surround sound system. And the real benefit of that is that you're kind of reusing most of the same components, uh, the amplifier and the stereo speakers in particular, uh, with with the preamp and the phono so now you can either listen to surround sound or you can listen to your uh, phono turntable system here i'm showing the uh, am setting i've got it on 610 which is one of the strong local stations you may get away with we've got a kitty cat and uh talk radio going on it's pretty it's pretty easy to turn that down immediately. That doesn't have any value. But um, anyway, we do show that the AM feature of this works. Uh, the main thing is this has AM and FM selectable yeah, on this oh, button okay. here. So I have a less. A I think we're just. So that illustrates the point, right, Scooter? Okay. Scooter's pretty good at answering questions, right, Scooter? Okay, thank you. So here, just to show you the uh, inputs and outputs in more detail, we've got phono, CD, and aux as inputs. Phono is special because it goes through the phono preamp, and also this uh, ground uh, setting here is used to put a electrical ground to kind of dissipate static electricity. So that's kind of important for a good sound, although it's not absolutely necessary. It'll still work without it. Um, we've got tape in and tape out. The key thing here is that the uh, tape out is going to be your output to connect this type of unit to uh, some type of AV receiver like I've been talking about. So if you want to use this as a preamp, we put phono in here, we get tape out here, and we have to set the controls on the front accordingly. So this tape out is a line level output, which is the standard for hooking uh, really any audio equipment except for phono onto uh, other equipment. So this is comparable to a CD player's output or something like that, or a, or a tape player's output. Um, 
the phono is really a separate beast because the um, turntables themselves produce a very small high impedance signal and that's why you need a preamplifier in some form uh, that's included in this type of unit and as I said at the beginning it could potentially be a separate box in a high-end audiophile setup but what you can't do is let's say plug your phonograph directly into the back of your AV system because all of its inputs are going to be line level and that's why you need this type of unit to marry the two together. I pulled the screws out of this it has the same type of topology I've seen in other AV units like this two big screws on each side and two smaller ones on the back whoops let's make that three smaller ones on the back now that I've got my screws loose more than usual I'll try to get this off these typically have a pinching situation built into the sheet metal it's kind of tricky to do it with one hand we'll see how I do with that okay so that was a success so let's look at what we've got here we've got this control board on the front with the uh, lights and switches and things this is our main power switch here of course binding the button on the front we've got a fuse for safety this power switch has a an aspect that goes to this transformer as well as to the switched output on the back so the transformer is where all the power is going through on the unit it's kind of a standard linear type power supply we've got uh, probably a AC center tapped here which simplifies the diode parts somewhere around here we've got some power diodes I don't see those offhand, but or they could be a monolithic uh, bridge rectifier of some kind. You can see this heat sink. We got four power transistors here, two for each channel. Probably a push-pull type amplifier arrangement. Um, power supply, filtering capacitors, various small capacitors and uh, resistors and things um, we've got an IC here that's probably the brains of the unit in effect uh, that's a custom Yamaha IC of some kind you can see that these outputs go kind of directly onto the main PC board here here's our big volume control in the back of that it's actually a kind of a nice knob but you can see that the pot it runs is just this fairly small pot that's okay here's a RF uh, box of some kind that connects to the um, antenna port so that could be some sort of uh, you know FM preamp or pre-selector also notice as is common with uh, audio receivers of any kind really they tend to have a lot of air inside part of that is because this is a kind of a low-end one that's working with a you know medium-sized box format I guess you could say but um, you know we do need some convective cooling here this is a kind of a typical passive design where the air flows in from the bottom rises from convection currents as it gets heated up on these heat fins and then uh, goes out through the holes on the top here so that's a pretty standard sort of design you can see that we've got essentially two little heat fins for each power transistor I guess there's another one in the middle I see now let's see I don't know, maybe the one in the middle is just for the heck of it, who knows, but oh, there's something else maybe attached to this heat sink, I'm not sure. Um, and this type of one-sided PC board, it's got 
PC board traces on the other side probably and then we've got these wire jumpers that sort of form a, a, a in effect a top layer so for this type of audio circuit you typically don't need uh, a very complicated PC board and using these jumpers is what they seem to find be the best uh, economics you know for a mass marketed unit like this uh, every little penny counts you can see these might be more complicated boards with all these switches and controls and LEDs on the front uh, this might be a you know at least a two layer board or maybe more but um, anyway pretty basic type of unit here and that goes with the fact that this is relatively small power uh, it's not a necessarily a, a bad thing that that it's filled with air and that it's you know got kind of a lightweight construction um, it really has to do with how well they designed the circuit a lot of these um, elements here are really pretty standard as far as the amplifier topology and so on um, so I've looked at the specs on this and and they look to be quite good this uh, Yamaha natural sound uh, line that they've made for many years um, I've been impressed with that whenever I've seen it it sounds good um, you know it looks good it's it works good it's kind of I wouldn't call it audiophile exactly but it's kind of on the high end of the consumer tier so I think that's about all we're gonna do on this one for now uh, I'll use this in some other videos maybe to show you more about how to hook some things up but uh, with this video focused on this unit in particular uh, I think we've about seen it all that ends our video on this RX 300U Yamaha receiver hope you enjoyed it you can really help me out by subscribing I'm approaching a thousand subscribers which is a big milestone on YouTube and uh, every bit of encouragement from my viewers really helps thanks for watching and bye bye